NFL Presidential Address. I'm your host, Lawrence Presman. I hope all of you had a wonderful Christmas uh, and, a, and a Happy New Year coming up. Uh, lots of bowl games. We talked about that today on the College Football Bowl Preview Show with Teddy and Dave Cook. And make sure to check that out. And now it's week 17 in the NFL. Uh, the hardest week in the world for me, but we'll talk about that with Ralph Michaels. Uh, let's bring him in. Hey, Mr. Ralph, what's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, Prez, uh, as we're talking, I'm, I'm leaning over and looking at this bowl game. And if I am the athletic director of the Miami Hurricanes and you get shut out against Louisiana Tech in a bowl game, it's time just to fire everyone on the staff. Well, I think that probably should have been done three years ago, Ralph. I mean, this Miami Hurricanes team hasn't uh, put a proper product on the field in half a decade. Well, I mean, Manny Diaz is a first-year yeah, serious hell. But, you know, we're talking NFL, and there's many bowl games to be had. So, you know, Prez, your point is very valid. You know, people go through a season, and they get into habits. I bet two, I bet three, I bet four, I bet five NFL games. And, you know, they're always in that range. And they think, well, that's the range they should be in. You get to week 17. It, like, If you like games and they're worth betting, bet them. If not, don't bet them. And I look at it as this. You know, look at your biggest week that you had maybe five or six games. And there's value on the board and you're looking at matchups. If these plays would have made that card back then, if you're not or you're forcing action or you're thinking, well, if this and this and this happens, I like the situation, I'll play it. But don't do that. If you truly think there's value on the game, you bet it. Otherwise, there's plenty of bowl action. Playoffs start next week. There's college hoops. There's plenty of action to fill the void if you're passing on the NFL this weekend. Yeah, and you know, Ralph, I've been really great in NFL playoff betting. So, I mean, to me, I'm excited about the NFL playoffs starting. And, you know, I think we're going to get some good value as well, especially with teams like Buffalo, um, which I'm excited about. You know, they were one of my losses this past week. Uh, I had them at plus six and a half and... Yeah, I felt like they could have won that football game, uh, but I did. I did go. Uh, I did go two and zero on Sunday, and I came back with the under in Minnesota and Green Bay on Monday. So I had myself a winning week sixteen in the NFL. But yeah, dude, I'm with you. Look, you know, I'd love to be able to go through this whole card with you and say, oh, you know, I like, you know, Cincinnati. I like Chicago. I like Tampa Bay. Whatever the case may be, but. In all seriousness, I don't think I'm going to be betting more than three games at most. I have very few opinions on a lot of the games. And, you know, what people really need to understand is a pass is an opinion. And for us to take a look at, you know, the Pittsburgh-Baltimore game or the New York Jets-Buffalo game or whatever game where a team is sitting half their starters, uh, if we pass on that game, well, that's just as good as a bet because... We're giving our opinions out, and uh, we're not going to force anything ever. Let me remind our viewers, leaving a winner off is much better than putting a loser on, because if you go one and one, you're still paying 10% juice. That's the difference. We're not forced to bet every game, but if you do bet two games and you split, you're still losing that 10%. So, again, to me, always leave a loser. I always leave, uh, excuse me, always leave a winner off than put a loser on if that game's in that gray yeah. area and, and save that juice each and every time you do that. Well, there's a lot of gray area, Ralph. And before we get into it, we're going to oh, talk yeah. some trends and whatnot. But I just want to, you know, wish everybody again happy holidays. Uh, we at WagerTalk.com uh, really appreciate uh, you guys watching our shows uh, we have so many videos that we do. Uh, Joe Ranieri is hosting an NBA and a college basketball show five days a week. You're on every day as college basketball show. Uh, we have the number one most watched NFL betting show in the world uh, right now with Bet On It, Kelly and Marco VR, and you're on that show as well. They also have a college football betting show that they do. Um, I do puck time and the betting edge every day, Monday to Friday. Uh, and we have first pitch starting in about 11, 12 weeks for baseball, where Dave Coken and I uh, do a daily baseball show. Uh, so, I mean, really, we are providing a 
ton of content, uh, but we're doing it because of the listeners, Ralph. I mean, we've passed 43,000 subscribers, and we wouldn't be spending as much money and time as we do if we weren't getting as incredible a response from everybody that we are. So hats off to all of you guys out there. Thank you for posting. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being part of our community. Uh, it is so greatly appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, for those college basketball fans, you know, Joe and I do a lot of quick hitters. We go through the biggest upsets, the biggest covers, the biggest, uh, the best scoring lines. So you get to learn the players. It's pretty entertaining. It's not like we run through the games in college basketball. And let's not forget, you know, uh, Prez, the sports grid, the wager talk TV show on sports grids taken off. Teddy and I do every day from uh, 12 to 1 o'clock Pacific, noon to, 3 e noon to 3 Eastern. We do that Monday through Friday as well. Well, I know you can't see me, but I got a haircut. I think I'm looking pretty snazzy. And, hey, the tan looks pretty good too, Prez. Yeah, even though you can't see me. Can you see me? <laughs> no. Damn. Uh, and, Ralph, I, and, I, and I prefer it that way. Thank yeah, you. you know what, dude? I understand, brother. Uh, Ralph, get into some trends because, you know, week 17, uh, there must be a bunch of stuff that is of interest to our listeners, uh, and then we'll get into the card. Well, for those that have watched Bet On It, College Football, or any of the videos I've done, you know that I'm a big fan of college football teams that were 6-6. Six and six. That motivation going into the bowl to either finish as a well, winning— Well, how about Miami? Yeah, well, again, you're, yeah, I'm you're kidding, like, dude. It, it's only been 67 percent, Prez. That still means that 33 percent are losing, but a 67 per percent trend is solid. So I, I asked, you know, in the NFL, is the same thing apply? So I went and I looked at teams that are seven and eight. If you're an NFL professional and you're seven and eight, record mean anything to you? I went all the way back to 2000. Seven and eight teams that are a home favorite have cashed 68% of the wow. time winning that game. So it does mean something. And that only applies to Dallas this week. They're in a little different situation because obviously they have playoff need. So then I do the flip side. If you are an eight and seven. I was team, just going to ask you that, Ralph. Away dogs that are eight and seven have gone 32% all the way back to 1989. 31 years. So a seven and eight team as a home favorite, a 68% to the good. An eight and seven team as an away dog, 32%. Again, going all the way back to 1989. Week 17, double digit favorites. 20 and 0 straight up, 13, 6 and 1 against the spread, going 68%. And we have, we have a bunch of those this week. We, we do. And, you know, we have more than we usually do. And really, with the advent of New Jersey and all these offshores, we're starting to see more and more double-digit favorites because the lines are becoming inflated in the NFL. And this year, we've had a historic number of bad teams as well. So, you know, two reasons why we've seen more. 17 games... If you bet every under in week 17 since 2010, you have cashed 57%, 82 unders, 62 overs. And so a 57% clip to the under, pay attention. Teams are resting. Some teams have injuries. They're just not playing those guys. You have teams that have given up. And sometimes you have rivalry games to finish the year where one team is playing with that revenge. So you have a, uh, an under situation. And finally, road teams, week 17, just blindly playing every road team since 2015, you've gone 58.1%. And I think that that has some meaning as well, because if you're a road team, it's still a business trip. If you're at home and the season's over, you know you're packing up your locker and yeah. you're done. You're done playing. So I think the cohesiveness of being on the road – going through your normal regimen of being at the hotel the night before, going and playing at the venue, that there's there's a legitimate reason why road teams are 58% against the spread in Week 17. He's Ralph Michaels, the most knowledgeable sports better on the planet. You can find him at wagertalk.com. 
And Ralph, I've got a massive promotion for you. You can tweet it out. It's live until Monday. Um, I was told by Teddy and Dave on the college football betting show today that America doesn't have Boxing Day. Uh, well, today is Boxing Day in Canada, uh, and everything is like half price. I went to um, I went to Best Buy today, Ralph. Uh, there was a four hundred person wait just to get in to the store. I skipped the line, of course, and went in. I bought myself the most incredible headphones uh, money can buy. Uh, I'll be wearing them next week, so uh, I'm very excited about that. But I put together a Boxing Week special for you, even though in America there is no Boxing Week, but I am Canadian, and well, in honor of that, here is the special. One year of all of Ralph Michaels plays, every sport, every bet, every single day. The regular price is $1,999. I literally took $1,000 off of that price. It is $999 for a full 365 days of all of Ralph Michaels plays. Use the promo code Ralph Boxing Day. That's Ralph Boxing Day. Uh, and to give perspective, Ralph, how much was your college basketball season? Yeah, I was going to say that's less than college basketball or there's less than football. And Prez, that wasn't a Ralph Improved special. I did not get the email on that. But uh, let me No, you that didn't. Here. And just to give everyone perspective, Ralph's one of Ralph's jobs at Wager Talk is actually to handle all of these specials. So normally when I do put these specials up, they are Ralph approved. That one was not. Let me let me tell our viewers this too. Um, I, I talked to Johnny and I talked to Marco before we did videos. And you know, I just got back from the studio now. We did all our videos. Marco and VR did the bet on its show. I did my my TNA segment on there. And you are gonna see maybe 15 commercials at Wager Talk TV that we're running a special for any capper from January 1st through December 31st for $1,200. That's the lowest price we've ever had. That's $100 a month, and that's available for anyone. So the special that I came up with that, that I thought was the special of all specials, Prez, you just knocked an extra $200 off of that. Yeah, well, listen, our, our listeners are more important to me than your listeners, Ralph. Gotcha. No problem. Okay, buddy, let's get, let's get into this card. Uh, well, the first game right off the bat, and I'm going right down through rotation order, Ralph. We're not going to worry about prime time because, well, there isn't any. Um, Tennessee-Houston. This is an important game for Tennessee, obviously. Uh, Destiny is in their hands. They win this game. They're in the playoffs, and I think they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. Uh, they find themselves at minus 3.5 with a total of 45. Uh, also, just quickly... I will sneeze, Ralph. I am sick as a dog. I just got back from Jamaica. I don't know what happened there, uh, but I can't stop sneezing. So if I sneeze, my apologies. But anyway, I was listening. I read a bunch of quotes. I was listening to some interviews with Bill O'Brien, and uh, they want to win this game in Houston, and they're going to play their starters, but he has said that it's probably not going to be the whole game. Um, I'm thinking... This is more of an in-game style bet for me. I'd like to see Houston maybe go down the field, score a touchdown, and then we can jump on Tennessee. Uh, but I think this is an in-game bet only for me, Ralph. Prez, I normally love fading must-win teams. Listen, we have a touchdown adjustment. Tennessee was minus three at home a couple weeks ago, and now they're laying that on the road. So you obviously are paying an extra touchdown because Tennessee needs to win. Yeah. I could go through a hundred situations where teams needed to win and they don't. Number one, you're playing a division foe. Number two, that division foe would love to beat you that second time. Number three, that division foe would love to sweep you and knock you out of the playoffs. And Bill Bryan, like you said, he said, we're playing to win. Now, KC's playing in the earlier time slot. If KC wins, they know their position is stuck. So no problem with you uh, agreeing with you about the live betting situation. But it, it, it's also just a role where 
I think there's too much value on Houston yeah. getting, giving him the seven points. And, and I agree, Ralph. And, and, and really, I think you missed the biggest reason why must win teams don't win. Because playing with pressure. if they were good enough, they wouldn't be in a must-win game on Week 17. Yeah, well, with Tennessee, you could say that was Marcus Mariota instead of Ryan Tannehill, but agree. Hey, listen, they, they were up double digits against New Orleans last week. They couldn't put that team away at home, and New Orleans was not in the best uh, spot. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you, dude. I mean, there's definitely value on Houston. I just I can't bet Houston here because, honestly, I mean – we can't take what these coaches say as as truth. Uh, Watson and, and Hopkins and the boys could come out for one freaking what I've gone I've gone blank one uh, freaking series series. Oh yeah. my god, I've gone blank, and then and then be done. Um, yeah. So I I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it, it's Houston or pass. But I, I'm gonna pass and see what happens for the in game. Our next game, though, uh, probably a little bit more interesting, Cleveland versus Cincinnati. And, you know, Cincinnati's locked up the number one C, uh, number one spot now, so they could go out and win this game and still get Tua if that's who they're going after. Um, I think Cleveland wants to win this game, though, Ralph. I think Cleveland wants to end uh, on a high note. I think Freddie Kitchens is playing for his job, um, coaching for his job. You know, my lean here is on Cleveland, but again, you know, Dalton has come back. He's added some life to the Cincinnati offense. I think over might be the play here, but it's a pass for me. Yeah, I'm looking at the live lines. And guys, if you don't go to Wager Talk for lines and scores, you're silly. You just go to wagertalk.com. Look at the top toolbar. You hit the odds. You're getting the the almost live Don Best feed. They're in the order. Johnny said, what order do we want them in? So we put them in the Circa, the Westgate, the Nugget, the, the independent guys that have those lines. We see Cleveland pretty much three now, a couple two and a half yeah. in the shop, a total of 44 or 44 and a half. And I, you know what? People were all over Cincinnati against Miami. I don't understand it. To me, the Browns have this far superior talent. And defense. Yeah. I, I think it's cheap. I agree with you. You have a, a new head coach. You have a still a, a young quarterback. You know, and Andy Dalton's playing for what? For, for to decide who's going to take his job next week? You know, yeah, Cincinnati's saying they want to win, but you have a team that won one game against a Browns team who, you know, was one of the Super Bowl favorites. Yes, they may only have six wins in their book, but they're still playing hard. This line seems low to me. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. I like Cleveland and I like the over in this game. Uh, Chicago against Minnesota here, Ralph. And, uh, you know, what is Minnesota playing for? Nothing. They're the sixth seed. Yeah, they're locked in. Yep. Uh, Chicago, I think they're going to air the ball out, though. Uh, I like the over in this game, Ralph, and, I, and I, I'm going to get to the window on the over in this game, and I, I'll tell you why. Uh, th th this is a, this is a uh, this uh, look. I don't want to say it's an audition for Mitch Trubisky. He's got one year left on his uh, rookie contract. Uh, they're cer certainly not going to extend it. Uh, but I see no reason why Chicago doesn't come out and air the ball all game. Uh, I think they're going to go for it on fourth downs as well. Um, I think Minnesota is going to rest a lot of uh, their players. And even though Chicago's got a outstanding defense, uh, 37 is a pretty low number here, Ralph. It's five touchdowns and a field goal. Um, I like the over in this game. And I'm getting a lot of value now, Ralph. It's dropped three and a half points. Wow, look at you at the math. Five touchdowns, actually five touchdowns and a safety, but that's all right. Well, I understand your point. Five the touchdowns we'll and a safety is a push, Ralph. I understand. Um, you know, Prez, this is the pass for me. I want no part of a Bears team that that offense has just been anemic. Yeah. And I want no part of a Minnesota team that, you know, Dalvin Cook did walkthroughs in practice. Alexander Madison did walkthroughs in practice. They're both listed as questionable. We saw what Mike Boone, if you have Mike Boone in running back, Kirk Cousins can't run play action. Kirk Cousins is exposed. Yeah. He was sacked five times at home, got 10 points and 139 yards. Passed for me. Yeah, that front seven on Green Bay looked really good on Monday night. 
Uh, Indianapolis against Jacksonville. And, you know, here's an interesting game, Ralph, because Jacksonville has given up. We told everybody that uh, six weeks ago, five weeks ago. Um, they're at home, so they fit into one of your trends where they're at home and they're just going to pack up and leave. Uh, they're going to have a new coach next year. Uh, they're going to have a new general manager. They're going to have a new VP of operations. They're going to have a new bloody well everything. Um, and Indianapolis, with Frank Reich as the head coach, they're going to play this game. They're going to play this game uh, as hard as they've played every other game this year. Uh, I think we're getting a good value on Indy, and I think you guys need to bet that game right now because, you know, it's three and a hook. There's a four out there. I think this game is going to keep creeping up. Um, I like Indianapolis here. Uh, Prez, that, that is one of, a summary that I totally concur with. Uh, you look at Jacksonville, their only win in their last eight games was because Oakland sat on a 16-3 lead and they let him score two fourth-quarter yeah. touchdowns or else they'd be on a, what, 0-7 straight up an ATS streak. As far as Indy playing, completely agree with you. Uh, Indy had lost four straight. They got it right against Carolina, another team that quit. Uh, the defense played very well. I expect the same. I agree with you. I like the Colts, and I agree you should bet it now. Yeah, and, and also, Ralph, in keeping with the trends at the beginning of the show, we have an Indy at a 7-8. and eight. You know, they win this game, they're 500, and I think that's important. Uh, you know, I think they can really hold their hang their hat up on that. They lost Andrew Luck at the beginning of the year. Um, they lost T.Y. Hilton. Um, I think I think they could be very satisfied based on the way their year has gone if they can end at 500. Yeah, you look back at their year. Three-point loss to Tampa Bay, three-point loss to Houston, four-point loss to Miami, two-point loss to Pittsburgh, seven-point loss to Oakland, six-point loss to the Chargers. New Orleans is the only time all year that they lost a game by over a touchdown. So that does give you confidence moving forward. Uh, Atlanta and Tampa Bay, Ralph, and I'm going to ask you a question right off the bat because I have been uh, in Jamaica, man. Um, why is this total dropping so much? It came out at 50 and a half. It's down to 48. Um, Tampa Bay did not go over the total last week. I had them on the over. Um, I know that they're without their two big wide receivers. Um, but this number now looks very juicy to me on the over. Uh, is Julio not playing? Is Matt Ryan not? What's no, happened no. in this Atlanta? I just think people saw the game last time, and you looked at Tampa Bay, and they think the streak is over, but I don't. I don't either. They've gone, they, they've gone 10 and 2 over under their last 12. And if you watch the Houston game last week, two definite reasons that the game went under. Number one, the field conditions were sloppy because it rained. Number two, there was significant wind. I actually looked at the weather forecast for this, Prez. You are fine, so I agree with that thought process. Yeah, dude, I, I actually think it might be one of the best plays on the board. I mean, look, you know, we know Atlanta is playing hard as hell. Um, they really like their coach. They, well, they're playing with their coach. They're going to go out there and try win this game. And, you know, another reason, honestly, why uh, the game with Tampa Bay didn't go over against Houston was uh, Jameis just kept missing his wide receivers. Um, that's wind-related, as you said, and obviously his footing was not right. Um, I think this game goes way over the total. Uh, that's a bet for me, Ralph. Two notes, two notes for Jameis. He now has six pick sixes on the year. And in the last six games... The first drive of the game, he has thrown an interception five times. So perhaps, you know, if you're Bruce Arians, you just let Ryan Griffin play the first series <laughs> so you don't turn the ball over and get a pick six. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see Jameis next year, though, because uh, we have seen an improvement. And you know what? When he is on his game, uh, he's as good as it gets. Uh, just yeah. so inconsistent. I mean, a 1-4 ratio last year, 31 touchdowns. 28 interceptions. I think there's only been one one or two quarterbacks that have ever thrown 30 picks. So uh, that that's a group you don't want to be part of. Uh, Washington versus Dallas. Washington's playing well. Uh, nice comeback last week. Um, they were down a lot. They're really, you know, they're trying their best, to say the least. And 
The turmoil in Dallas is out of control. Uh, there cannot be any way Jason Garrett comes back. Okay, there can. They win, the Philadelphia Eagles lose, and then they go win the damn Super Bowl. Uh, but um, this Dallas team is dead man walking to me, Ralph. Uh, I think this number is too high. Uh, I like Washington, but I am not going to bet this game, Ralph. Uh, just no reason to. Well, Dwayne Haskins not going to play, yeah. so you know that that puts that puts your your backups in a situation. And with Haskins, you know you might want to get that wind at the end of the year. But you know, the, the Dak Prescott was held out of the practice on Christmas Day. I think if you want to bet Washington, bet him now. I think this line's going to come down. Well, we've you know, already seen that, Ralph. I mean, we had a consensus opening line of fourteen. It's down to ten and a half. It keeps dropping. Um, and I understand that Haskins isn't playing here, but I mean, let's be honest, uh, Dak is a mess. Uh, the play calling on Dallas is just awful. I mean, this is the number, this team puts up more yards than any team in the league, and yet they can't score. Um, there's just, everyone's angry at each other. Uh, it's Washington or pass, and, and I am passing. I Ag agree with that thought. I. I but it's pass pass for me. I don't want Washington in the in the position they're in, and I don't want any part of the Cowboys laying double digits. Uh, New Orleans going into Carolina, and we have obviously a Carolina team that quit. We already spoke about it. They've given up on the year, but New Orleans at minus thirteen is way too high a number for me. Look, New Orleans needs to win this game. Them, Green Bay, San Fran, Seattle. It's actually quite amazing that four teams are still in the running for the one seed. Uh, and four teams, the very same four, are still in the running for the five seed. Uh, this game means a lot to New Orleans. They're going to come in there flying. I like New Orleans in the first quarter here, Ralph. And I like them in the first half, but I'm not going to take them on the full game. I I am I am not. This is another game that you know. I had talked about double digits, and let me repeat that: Week 17 double digit favorites are 13, six and one, 68 percent against the spread. But I, I want no part of a, a New Orleans team that you know a win's a win. They don't need any yeah. style points. They were on the road last week against Tennessee, and. I'll tell you what, they impressed me as much as anyone. Coming off that San Francisco game on Monday on, on Sunday and then off that coronation on Monday night against Indianapolis to go into Tennessee like they did and pull out that win. Um, you know, they were down, what, 14-10 at the half, and they ended up winning 38-28. So they kudos, and, and they get all my respect. But, uh, you know, this is Carolina. This is another game on grass. It, it negates some of the averages and no no part of wanting a double-digit road favorite. I'm with you there. Well, Philadelphia against the New York Giants. Um, man, I mean, everybody is going to want to take Philly here. Uh, this team defensively looked absolutely outstanding against Dallas last week. Uh, they should do just the same to the New York Giants. A total of 45 on tap. I don't know how the Giants are going to score three touchdowns against this defense. But the Philly offense is a mess right now. Uh, injury riddled. Uh, Carson Wentz, um, although he's not throwing pick sixes all game long, his inconsistency is right there with Jameis. I mean, he one series is three and out. The next series, he's unbelievable. Um... They're getting it done, but they're getting it done barely. I think the Giants are going to come to play here. Um, I really want to take Philadelphia. I don't think I can. All right, let me let me jump in here. Okay, Jameis Winston has a 31-28 ratio. Carson Wentz is completing 64% of his passes. He has 3,750 yards, and he has a 26-7 to 7 ratio. So don't compare Carson Wentz to James No, I'm Winston. only saying in, 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 in inconsistent, man. I okay. mean, you, you watch Carson on a series, and he's all world marching down the field. Then the next three series is he can't do a damn thing. That's what I'm well, talking about. Part of it, when your leading wide receiver is Dallas Gethert, you know, what do you expect? So, you know, a lot of it is the receiving core. But, again, I, I think – I think the Giants will score. 
you look last week, they put 552 yards up. Yes, the skins are not the Eagles. I'm not comparing it. But you had Daniel Jones passing for 550. You had Saquon Barkley rushing for 180. You scored 36 points the week before against Miami. You put up 412 yards. You know, I think it's an important game. I think last win, last week's game for the where the Giants was important beating Washington because you now have your quarterback, you have your running back, you have the makings of a team moving forward where you can legitimately say, you know, Daniel Jones and Jaquan Barkley are an offense that can be an upper half offense in the NFL. So uh, I, again, this is one of those must win games and, you know, facing a division foe is so much different week 17 where I think the Giants give them all they handle. And yeah. I'm not surprised that the Giants actually beat them. Yeah, and, and, and that's – and we've seen it before, Ralph. Funnily, we've seen it with Dallas. And I think against the New York Giants, wasn't it just a few years ago where Dallas wins and they're in the playoffs? They go to a New York Giants team that barely did anything and lost – Week 17? Yeah, it was in 2018. The Giants won. Oh, the Giants lost 36-35 that game. Um, it would have been... Yeah, I'm going back on the Giants. I can't find it. But there's instances like that every every year where the must-wins are laying a touchdown more than they should. And we see when you get on the field that division hatred just means too much. Yeah. But, I mean, listen, let me give you a converse argument here, Ralph. Uh, Philly has to be feeling really good about themselves right now. Uh, they, they really did not have destiny in their hands all for the last five, six weeks. Uh, they, they, they beat Dallas. They beat them nicely. Uh, they know they can beat this team. Um, and they know that they have a path into the playoffs. Uh, that's what's really keeping me off of the New York Giants. But, like, on a whole, I'm with you. I mean, I want to bet Philly, but I feel like the Giants can win this game outright. But I don't want to bet the Giants because Philadelphia has to be going into this game with a lot of confidence, feeling good about themselves. Such a shame I can't bet this game. Well, let's just remember, Prez, that three weeks ago, Philadelphia was in a must-win situation. Right in Miami. They, well, no. Uh, well, at Miami, then they lost. But then they were home against the Giants. They were in a must-win at home, and they still only won twenty-three seventeen. Yeah. And that's why we're not betting this game, right? Yep. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Baltimore. Um, same time as the Tennessee Houston game. Um, Pittsburgh's going to bring it. Really well coached team. Uh, they're going to they're going to play to win this game. Obviously, um, they win this game, and uh, Tennessee loses. They're in the playoffs, uh, and Baltimore is resting everybody. Ralph, uh, Mark Ingram injured. Obviously, uh, Lamar Jackson's not going to see any playing time. Uh, we'll probably see Juden and some of the defensive guys uh, sitting as well. And I really like Baltimore. I do too. Uh, I was waiting for you to really say Pittsburgh. I I'll tell you what, this line is probably 14 points off. Yeah. Is Lamar Jackson worth 14 points? Hell no. Robert Griffin is still better than the duck. Baltimore's defense, even though Pittsburgh's is great, is still going to be better than Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh in the last eight games, their high yardage mark was 339 yards. And that was at Cincinnati. The only other time they topped 300 yards in any game was against Cleveland, and that was 18 first downs and 323 yards. Pittsburgh wants Pitt, Pittsburgh wants Baltimore, but Baltimore wants Pittsburgh out of the playoffs. Boy, when you can knock a division foe from a playoff berth, that's all you want. And I just think this line is completely inflated. Yeah. Even with Lamar Jackson, even without rushing who you are, you still have the better quarterback, you still have the better offense, and you should be the favorite. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the points you made, which is really, really great, Ralph, is the, you know, just the hatred between the teams. But take it a step further and understand that even though Baltimore did win a Super Bowl not too long ago, that division has been Pittsburgh's division for over a decade. Sure. And you know, with Big Ben maybe potentially coming back next year or retiring, who the hell knows what's going to happen with him. Um, I think Baltimore is seeing a changing of the guard right now, and I think it's very, very important 
to them that Pittsburgh does not make the playoffs. Uh, I think this team's coming out flying. And not only that, Ralph, uh, but one has to remember, RG3 is a running quarterback, and the style of defense, the style of offense that they've built around Lamar Jackson, really fits RG3 nicely as well, like a glove. Um, obviously, he's not Lamar Jackson, uh, but I don't think it's going to change a lot of the play calling. Uh, it's one of the best bets on the board. Yeah, even though the total's 37, which may seem low, I I, I like the under in that game too. Well, who the hell in Pittsburgh is going to score, dude? Yeah, yeah. Well, nope. New York Jets versus Buffalo. Uh, again, Sean McDermott came out uh, today, yesterday, uh, said, hey, we're playing our starters, we're playing a win. You know, we're Buffalo, we're changing the culture, we're a team that wins. Uh, we're coming out to win this game. Uh, and I think they will, Ralph. And I think the thing with Buffalo is they had New England on the ropes and they lost that game. Uh, they had Josh Allen with the ball in hand four and change on the clock, marching down the field to beat New England, uh, and they couldn't do it. And I think they've got adjustments they need to make. I don't think they're, I don't think they think they're playoff run ready. I think that they're gonna continue to improve. They're gonna look at this game as a game that gives them an opportunity to improve. Uh, and I think they're gonna come flying. I think they wanna go into the playoffs with this game as a W. Uh, and uh, at one, uh, I like Buffalo. I agree with that thought wholeheartedly that there's certain teams that, you know, Houston's a playoff team. Houston's been a playoff right. team. You know, for them to say they're going to try playing, I think that changes when, when it can't, when it, you know, when it comes down to it and your first player gets nicked up and he says, screw it. And he pulls all. Well, the that's exactly out. what I said, dude. The, but, the, you know, Sean McDermott, I agree with the philosophy that you want to go in with momentum. But I'll tell you what, I, I cannot play the Bills. I mean, you talk about going through the gauntlet. You go to Dallas and you beat them Thanksgiving. Then you host Baltimore, the biggest game in the AFC, and you lose by seven. Then you go to Pittsburgh. The winner has the number five wild card basically locked up. And then you go to New England. You just played your third road game in four weeks in a game you could have tied at the end of the game for potentially the division championship. I, you know, I'd almost say to them, I would rather have them come out flat if I'm the head coach than play another down to the wire game against the Jets going into the playoffs, having battled those four straight weeks. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm a Jets fan as far as the defense goes. Oh, yeah. Everyone talks about the Bill, <laughs> Bill's defense. I think they're number three or four in the NFL. Well, the Jets are only one spot behind them. And if you look at the Jets' defense, I actually have the Jets' defense efficiency rated higher than Buffalo because if you look at those first five games where they didn't have a quarterback, that defense was on the field for 38 minutes, 39 minutes each game, and they still put up those numbers. So, uh, again, another game where the, the number's not going to be too low for me to look at the under between these two. Yeah. You know, right now we're looking at Buffalo one, one and a half, and there's even a two really split. And 36 or 36 and a half may seem low in October, but when it's chilly and you're playing two NFC East rivals with top five defenses outside, 36 and a half is not too low. Yeah, I like the under two. I agree, Ralph. Uh, you know, look, we've seen Buffalo really struggling to score, and when they do, it's slow, long drives. And, you know, this Buffalo defense is stout. The New York Jets defense, as you said, is maybe one of the best in all of football. Uh, I like the under there. I'm with you 100%. Uh, guys, listen, make sure to take advantage of Ralph Michaels' special that I'm giving out only on this show. Uh, it's $1,000 off of an entire year of all of his plays. Uh, use the promo code Ralph Boxing Day. Ralph, Miami against New England, and, well, I don't need to go much into this one. Who do you think I like? Oh, you love those New England Patriots. I know that, you know, awful loss and at home, and, you know, they won again against Buffalo last week, and week 17, they're 9-2, they're and two, their last 11. Um, but, you know, Prez, I'm going to have to disagree with you because I don't want to lay those points with New England. <laughs> I'm not going to lay 16 points. Dude, I'm all over that's... Miami. Oh, okay. I think Miami wins this game. 
I'm, I'm putting money. I'm telling you flat out, I'm betting the money line with Miami. All right. Flat out. Let me look what it is right now. It's like 610 or something. Money line, and it's so nice. I'm going to go back to the wagertalk.com odds page. Right on the top, it has game, first half, second half, money line bets from every casino. It is so easy to use. Miami right now, you can get as high as plus 850, 850. at the Golden Nugget. Yep. Yeah. So I'm betting Miami on the money line, and here's why. Look, obviously, I like Miami at plus 16. Uh, I don't think New England can, you know, score a whole time. I mean, look, if Miami puts up 10 points, New England needs to put up 26. Um, if Miami another puts math, up... Another big math. A yo! Math, uh, equation there. Wow, yeah, and if two. Miami puts up 14 points, New England needs to put up 630. Uh, New England uh, is not putting up 30 points. Um, this team is dinking and dunking their way down the field every single game. And man, Fitz Magic, dude, this guy is a winner who doesn't win. Do you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, you act like, you know, New England has never put up 30. You know, they did put up 30 against Cincinnati. <laughs> and just to let you know, in that Cincinnati game where they put up 30, they had 291 yards of offense. Yeah, pathetic. Um, I like Miami a lot here, Ralph. This team just doesn't want to die. Uh, I, I am so impressed with their coach. Uh, he has just done such an outstanding job. And, you know, I think it's going to bode well for Miami over the next few years because here you have a team uh, who really just did not win many games at all this year. And yet, I mean, 4-11 and 11 on the year, Ralph, and yet I feel like they're instilling a winning culture. I think this team is trying damn hard. I think Fitzpatrick is trying his ass off. And I think they will... Dude, if Miami wins against New England on Sunday, they will feel better about themselves than the team who loses in the Super Bowl. Uh, Prez, I got one more point to add for you. While, you know, New England and Miami is a rivalry and Miami beat them last year, let's remember that Brian Flores is the coach who has been a New England assistant since 2004. Belichick traditionally takes it easy on his assistants and doesn't want to embarrass them. Yeah, there you go. Ralph and I both like Miami. Uh, Green Bay versus Detroit. Here we have another one of these double-digit road favorites. Uh, I got nothing. I do, too. I'll tell you what. Detroit has quit, but with that Green Bay offense, I have no interest at all in laying 12 and a half. The total's where I think it should be, so uh, I think it's a pass-pass, and let's move on. But, Ralph, just, you know, side note, really, uh, have you seen a worse 12-3 team in your life? No, well, I mean, you, you look at the stats and, you know, I'm a yards per game guy and I know you can't always count on them, but Green Bay away from home this year is getting outgained by 57 yards per game. That is, that is a team in an eight game schedule that is, you know, two and six on the road, three and five at best to be outgained by 57 yards yeah. per game. So, you know, that's all you need to put it in perspective. You have an offense on the road averaging 287 yards, laying almost two touchdowns. It's absurd. Uh, and yet I can't take Detroit. Me, uh, me either. Yep. Um, LA Chargers versus Kansas City. You know, look, Kansas City needs to win this game, Ralph. Uh, they can see a way to the – to. Um, Taken over from New England for the two seed, and uh, and they hold the tiebreaker against New England. So, you know, I think New England is going to be in tough against Miami. I think that game is going to be much closer. I think Kansas City will be looking at it on the scoreboard, seeing that it's a tight game. Uh, I think we're going to get their very best out of Kansas City. With that said, the Chargers want to beat this team, dude. Uh, with that said, Kansas City's the play. Minus nine. 
Of all the road favorites over a touchdown, this is clearly the one I like the most. Why? They're a home because favorite. Pat Ralph. Mahomes is still going to score a few touchdowns. Yeah. You know that. And this defense over the last five weeks is allowing under 10 points per game. This defense, the last nine games, has 31 sacks. That's over 3.3 yards per game. You look at when Phillip Rivers gets pressure and gets sacked three times or more, he's a train wreck. Yeah. Uh, Arizona versus the Rams. There's really no lineup here. Uh, minus 445. I got no opinion, dude. I don't either. You know, I was on Arizona against Seattle. I thought that line was just crazy. So, you know, with Arizona, you have another team with – you know, like the Browns, you have a new head coach, you have a young quarterback, you want to you want to instill that. So, if they got a chance to steal one, they're they're going to continue to play hard, but you know, depending on who the Rams trot out there, the Rams are still the better team on paper by far. Uh, Ralph, uh, in rotation order at San Fran Seattle, but we're going to save that game for last. Uh, Oakland against Denver and well, look, Oakland has a way into the playoffs. They need every team to lose except Indianapolis, um, very unlikely. And I think uh, yeah, my... Jump, let, me, let me jump in there, Prez. It's not that unlikely. They need Tennessee to lose to Houston. Can that, that happen? Yes. They need Pittsburgh to lose to Baltimore. Can that happen? Yes. And they need the Colts to win, and they're in a road favorite. So it's not that crazy. Yeah. So with that said, I like Oakland here. Um, they're... A dog against Denver. Uh, I don't get this line. Uh, you know, there there's times, Prez, when you're handicapping. And listen, through a season, no matter how much time we put in it, there's teams that you read well and there's teams that you read poorly. I have not called a Denver Broncos game right this entire season. I played against them multiple times. They beat me. I played on them a couple times. I lost. I gave up handicapping Denver Bronco games and Oakland games. So whatever you have to say, you have the entire floor. Yeah, but I don't have much to say either because I haven't read either of these, team right, these teams right all year. I'm with you. Okay. Dude, I can't win against Oakland. I can't win on Oakland. I can't win against Denver. I can't win on Denver. All I know is that Oakland might have something to play for in this game and Denver doesn't. And, uh, Again, though, we have a division foe. Yeah, but we're home. getting three points, Ralph. Oh, I understand. I'm not making a point. I'm just saying you have a Denver Broncos team, which now has their quarterback of the future, who has won three of their last four games, can finish the season winning four of five yep. with the first-year head coach that can knock out a division foe from the playoffs. So, I, again, and I think that's an important lesson. Prez, between us, we've been handicapping 50-some years. If you have, if you don't have a read on a team, don't force yeah, it. It's I'm okay not touching to say, this game. I'm moving this game to the side. I have not read the team right. There's absolutely no reason for me to get involved with a game, be it college basketball, be it the NFL, be it any sport. And I think our viewers need to take that to note that, hey, you make a bad – you may, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Fool me three times. Screw you. I'm done with you. Yeah. Well, let's get into the big one. Uh, a lot of marbles riding on this game, my brother. Uh, San Fran going into Seattle, minus three and a half with a total of 47. And I like that Seattle lost last game. I think it bodes well for them in this game. That last game was a meaningless loss. It has no effect on the standing. Seattle wins, and they could end up being the number one seed in the playoffs. I did not think the Seattle team was very good coming into the season. I have been proved wrong. Uh, but here's what I know, Ralph. I know that it takes a long, it's usually a long road to win any type of trophy, whether you're trying to win the Stanley Cup 
whether you're trying to win in baseball, you know, you look at the Atlanta Braves with Smoltz and Gladden and Maddox and how many times they lost in order to finally win. You look at what the Nationals went through and then they finally won. You know, we saw Peyton Manning lose a bunch of game shots at it. Then he finally won on and on and on and on and what i'm saying ralph is we have a playoff pedigree team who has won the super bowl with a coach that is one of the best in all of football playing for all intents and purposes a washington nationals team at the start of their road to the world series i love seattle here ralph and i'm getting points uh, well, we're going to finish on a disagreement, and that's fine. But, um, you know, I'm not getting to the window with San Fran, so I don't want people thinking I'm making that big of a statement. But, you know, I look at the talent on these two teams. It's night and day. You lose Chris Chris Carson oh, yeah. now, and, you know, that's a huge loss. You look at – you talk about Green Bay, Prez. Seattle on the season is getting outgained. You're getting outgained on the season. Right now you should be a 7-9 and nine team. But you're playing for the number one seed. The opposite team, San Francisco, plus 103 yards per game. That's the second best in the NFL. And in fact, that plus 103 yards per game, that's the highest mark in the NFL in the last five years. So in the previous four seasons, after a 16-game schedule, no team was plus 100 yards per game. They've proven to me they can do it. You know, you have you have a quarterback. Yes, he has 13 interceptions compared to five to Russell Wilson, but you, you just have a better defense. You have a better offensive line. You have a rush attack that you have multiple weapons. And, uh, you know, Marshawn Lynch may be the savior, but I can't imagine him coming in against the San Francisco D-line and being effective. Look, everything you're saying makes total sense, Ralph, and I agree with you. San Fran is loaded with talent. You know, I just look at this game and I think to myself, man, I get three and a hook here. Seattle down by 10 with three to go. Russell Wilson has the ball. I'm covering, dude. Um, I feel like, you know, Seattle, we've talked about their home field advantage being overrated. I don't know if it's going to be overrated Sunday night. That place is going to be insane. Uh, Garoppolo is going to have a tough time getting play calls out. Uh, and I feel like, Look, I don't, I'll, I'll tell you flat out, Ralph, and I'll end this show here. I don't think San Fran or Baltimore are going to the Super Bowl. And I do think San Fran and Baltimore are the two best teams in football. Prez, I got a stat for you. Since January 2nd, 2011, the Seattle Seahawks are 12-1-1 as a home dog. And of those 14 games... They've won 10 of them outright. Yeah. Dude, Pete Carroll's a god, man. I mean, he, 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 is, he is the Bill Belichick of the NFL, and that made no sense. <laughs> Ralph, I just love doing these shows with you, brother. We're going to keep them going right through the playoffs. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to do this with you. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you got to spend some time with your son. Um... Uh, I, I don't know if you have anything big planned for New Year's, uh, but I hope that's amazing too. Have a great weekend, uh, and me and you will uh, be back on Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll figure it out uh, to do the wild cards. Awesome, Prez. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your vacation. Happy Boxing Day to all of those in Canada, eh? And uh, hey, uh, I love the promotion. Twelve hundred dollars. You're going to see it all over Wager Talk TV for any service for twelve months. Boxing Day, Ralph, gets you my twelve months of service for about eighty dollars a month. That breaks down to what two dollars and sixty cents a day, Prez. People go. No, crazy. no, you you did not pull that out of your ass. I did. Well, well, well okay, eighty dollars. Okay, times five. We got it. 60. It's Ralph. Okay. Boxing Day. 80, 80 times eighty times twelve is nine sixty, so that's close. So eighty dollars divided by three for thirty days, two is sixty, and add in the extra twenty, it's like two seventy two dollars and seventy cents. People go crazy for two dollar Tuesday. Imagine having two dollar Tuesday almost every day of the year. And that's why he's the greatest. Ralph Michaels, I love you, bro. Be well.
Perez, thanks, bud.